Hi friends, in this session I shall be speaking to a famous denim designer, Miko Underwood. Miko is an artist, season design director, sustainability practitioner and the founder of the first sustainable denim brand, Harlem, New York, Oak and Corn, only for the rebels. A denim expert with nearly 20 years of wash product and development experience, Miko founded Oak and Corn to tell the authentic denim history. Uh, her genderless luxury uh, denim brand pays homage to the untold history of the indigenous American and the enslaved Africans contributions that have shaped American manufacturing and American denim. Oak and Corn threads eco fabrics, historic storytelling and social impact with the innovative fashion. So I'm really pleased to invite Miko uh, for this conversation. Hi Miko. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm <laughs> Thank fine. you for that introduction. <laughs> no, you must. I mean, you you deserve it. I mean, I think it was uh, it could have been a little bigger also. <laughs> uh, if you could have added many more points, but I think uh, it would be good to hear from you because you know it's so wonderful to read about uh, what you're doing and uh, how you are uh, also making an impact on how people think. And so uh, it's wonderful. And I would like to know, uh, you know, about. Uh, uh, more about yourself and how you came into about your career and how you came into denim designing and your brand Oak and Corn. Oak and Acorn, yeah. Um, well, I've been designing denim for many, many years. I actually started as a costume designer and I was making clothing for uh, entertainment artists like, you know, um, Ludacris, which is a big hip hop artist in the United States. And um, uh, TLC and so I was doing a lot of like music videos I was doing uh, um, award shows and working with like really big name stylists to make specific clothing for these artists and um, I went on to be to work in the industry because I wanted to learn you know what it meant to work in the industry and not just kind of like run around and you know creating these pieces for these one-off pieces to people. I wanted to find out what the business was like. And so I uh, went on and started freelancing um, in the industry, really didn't have a design background. Like I didn't go to school for design. I actually went to, to school for, uh, I was a pre-med major, I was a biology major. So I, oh. I had a totally different track. <laughs> and, um, and cause I love, I love science. I, like that. I love I love the human body I love the biology but I guess it kind of makes sense because I'm making clothes for the body but um so I went on to uh become a head designer for um the brand baby fat um and their girls their girls collection then went on to from head designing I went on to become a design director uh, back in 2005 and I started working with many brands everything from like Von Dutch to uh, academics um, oh god so many different brands and that was just my career of being design director and so um, went on to work for national junior denim brands did a lot of junior denim design um, we did a lot of misty denim design young women's um, young men's um, and so I did everything from children all the way up to um, Missy and my last stint was as a uh, design director for the Jessica Simpson collection and also for LEI. So, I mean, I've been in the business of doing bottoms, but not just bottoms. I was doing a lot of like sportswear collections, but I started to start to fine tune my career into working on hard, you know, woven pieces and, and denim bottoms, and that became my specialty. So, I mean, I've just been in it for a really long time, and I wanted to be able to do something that, uh, for myself, and I tried over the years many times to do, like, you know, my own thing, and I, this finally, finally it caught, finally it, <laughs> something caught. <laughs> It has come out so well. I mean, people are appreciating it a lot. So Oak and Corn is your brand. Yes, Oak and Acorn is my brand. And uh, it's uh, the full name, I think, is uh, Oak and Corn, only for the rebels. Why only for the yes. rebels? Because, you know what? I think that uh, to be a rebel is somebody to, like, disrupt the norm, to um, 
somebody that's like a pioneer and an and innovator, uh, somebody that's a visionary that wants to make change. And so I feel like that's so much of, of uh, what I embody and what I've brought to the brand. And um, I feel like, you know, you have to kind of be brave. I think I think that, you know, some pieces, some people get intimidated by some of the pieces. And I'm, I, what I'm trying to show people is that, you know, everyone could wear, this is wearable. Obviously I've made a genderless brand. Like this is wearable for men, women, everyone is able, it's super comfortable. It's just, you know, but I think that in this moment, we have a lot of rebellious people. We have a lot of people who are willing to make change, who not rebellious and anarchy or anarchist, but just kind of like someone who's like passionate and wants to, you know, be an, an action oriented person who wants to, you know, do something really great for our humanity in this moment. And so that's why I feel like only for the rebels is the right, right kind of like statement for the brand. Yeah. I mean, all of us in some ways are rebels, uh, you know, at some point of time, maybe, or uh, uh, at some on some issues. Uh, that's right. We can be, uh, most of us can be rebels in some ways. Absolutely. So, so what uh, Okincon, I mean, tell me a little more about Okincon, what you, uh, what kind of uh, products you do in, or is it only denim or you also do other products and uh, what is the inspiration to the, the concept, uh, the story behind Okincon? Uh, so Oak and Acorn, there's a couple of, um, it's denim, there's some knits in there, so everything is sustainable and there's some um, non -den a little bit of non-denim um, uh, woven pieces, but everything in the brand is sustainable. It was important to me for each part of the collection to be able to um, include the essential pieces. So we have um, five different categories in the collection. It's a, it's a small collection, but it's very focused. Um, but the categories, we have the, the Sunrise Collection, which pays homage to um, it, uh, the, it, the origins of indigo and denim. So I have in that part of the collection is um, hand dyed, hand woven artisan fabrics from West Africa that are connected with um, uh, dead stock denim. So I have used some repurposed or dead stock denim and woven together pieces of um, our of this indigenous fabric then we have like our denim essentials which is like you know like your denim shirt your work shirt your chore shirt your long sleeve chore shirt um you have your classic five pocket jean like those things and i've also mixed and matched some of those pieces into my sunrise collection i have my statement hoodies which are just have emblazoned with like inspiration the statement hoodies which i'll show you they are like these are the things that are on sale right now on our website this is a sustain evolve. okay yeah and so like we have four statement hoodies um the the collection will go live um um uh in the beginning of next year we'll start to see more of it in stores but we also have a quilted collection that was completely um to pay homage to it's called the Guise Quilted Collection. It pays it pays homage to Guise Bend, which is an area in the in the south of the, of the Americas, um, in the American South, that where women um, had all these quilted techniques and they used it to um, they used denim that was taken from um, their you know their family members who worked out in the in plantations and out in the field and they used it to create these quilts and to tell a story and so um that's what the inspiration to see that part of the collection really growing into something really beautiful so i, I made these different statements um so that i can just kind of like create the foundation and then continue to evolve each piece of it and then last but not least my signature coveralls which you know, this this time, the first time around when I um, originally um, started the collection, um, I had I'd only started with one coverall, and it was my signature coverall, which is our uh, Rebel coverall, and that's the one that pays homage to the enslaved, the worker, the laborer, um, the farmer. You know, this is something that you know really inspired and started the the ethos of the brand. It it was the the mainstay, and so I now have the Rebel coverall and. Um, we also have the Born Free coverall, which is emblazoned with um, Born Free and, and Rebels, like I have on my sleeve. So this is one of the Born Free coveralls. And um, those coveralls in particular 
go back and pay. Uh, we give, we work with our social impact partner on that, and so we give 20% of the proceeds from our profits from the from the coveralls back to We Got Us Now, which is an organization for children and young adults impacted by parental incarceration, which is a huge issue in the United States. Criminal justice is a really, you know, the criminal justice space, um, people being incarcerated in the United States is a big, it's an epidemic. You know, there's over 10 million children in the United States who've been impacted by parental incarceration. It's also my personal story. My dad has been incarcerated. Oh, really? It's, it's real. Yeah, yeah. My dad's been incarcerated now for 32 years. Um, and we've been fighting for him to get home. Yeah, it's it's not, it's really a terrible thing that happens here in the United States um, where we over incarcerate people and take, you know, families, um, rip families apart. And so, um, yeah, so it's been, it's, it's, that was really important to me to have this um, social impact partner to give back, to help them activate and change policy and do things in, in, in government to really help you know, change laws and really end in mass, mass incarceration because no one should be in prison. You know, in all, in countries around the world, the maximum is about 20 years. And yeah. for us, we, we put people in prison for their entire life. We give them life sentences. And so, you know, it's really important that that changes. So that's what the, um, the coverall represents and goes back to. Uh, that's, I mean, very, very touching, I would say. Uh, I mean, uh, with a personal uh, connect, you know, I mean, uh, I, I'm very sorry for that. I mean, I, I never knew that, but I really wish and hope uh, that things go, you know, I mean, you're doing a very noble thing by connecting to that cause. And uh, yeah. I really hope that it, uh, you know, the changes come, you know, what we are looking for. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I think change, changes are happening. I think change will come, but it's really important, I think, you know, as designers that we um, be able to do things that can really impact our communities. That's what sustainability means to me. It's not just the fact that all of my stuff is made of, you know, tensile hemp, um, refibra, um, you know, artisan dead stock fabrics, you know, all of these things, you know, you know, BCI cotton, all of this kind of stuff. It's important, obviously, that part of it, but it's also important for me to be able to have, you um, uh, uh, an impact, you know, to invigorate people to go to be in, to, you know, be actionist people to be in action and do things um, to help change our communities and, and really be impactful, especially for us in America right now, where we're going through this crazy election year, all this <laughs> shenanigans that are happening right now in our government, you know, it's really important, you know, that people are activated, not just with the presidential election, but in our local elections and do things, you know, even if you, you, whatever you can do in your local election, but what can you do locally in your community to help your community? Maybe it's just volunteering and helping in organizations that have been really helping communities and, you know, doing things to make change, you know, whether it's plant, helping to create more green spaces, helping to clean up, helping to help disadvantaged communities, whatever it is, but I really want to inspire people to do something with their energy and you know I think it helps us to grow and help us to be better humans when we when we help our fellow humans to do something and be better. That's really inspiring and uh, I would say that you know um, uh, when we talk about sustainability it is totally incomplete without the human connect without uh, you know the community when you, if you're not able to do something for your community for the social causes the sustainability part is really actually you know incomplete uh, unless we really include that in a proper way. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, coming to your New York Fashion Week uh, collection, you know, uh, for 2021. Please tell me something about uh, that. It has uh, it has got great, very good reviews, and I would really love to know. Uh, you know, even uh, people who are watching us uh, would love to know about that. Okay. Well, that was you know we were able to. Well, you got to understand. Let me step back for a second. Normally, New York Fashion Week, you know, we'd have a huge fashion presentation, everyone's there, but with the coronavirus, obviously, we had to make changes and we had to figure out how we could do it. And just even behind the whole behind the scenes situation of like only allow having been being able to have 10 people in this space at a time when we have 
model standing in different spaces outside and you know i mean it was just very it was a very surreal situation but we made it work and we made it work in three days we turned it around in three days we filmed it in one day and then three days we went live with the with the presentation and um we had such great people um, work with us. We had Blank Studios in NYC. We had um, our director, which is my sister, Ebony Underwood, who's also the founder of the organization I, met, I mentioned, We Got Us Now. Um, she was the director of it, the director of photography, um, Dave Fremas, the photographer on set, who's done all of our lookbook and our collection and just kind of like captured the energy of it, Peter Osborne stylist, you know, Sophia Lemire. But we had an incredible and straight wall uh, one uh, models who they were all there participating. My son is in it. Um, it was really a great presentation. And what we wanted to show was the history of denim and just a small snippet of how denim has impacted our American history. And I feel like, you know, oftentimes when we talk about denim in America, we see this very um, monolithic perspective it's very whitewashed you don't see um you often see like you know very male focused um uh presentation of denim oftentimes than not white males sometimes white women you don't see women leading in the denim space you never hear of any of kind of diversity and then when you think about the history of denim and how it originated and how Indigo, as you know, indigo is indigenous from India and Africa, and it was one of the actually the hidden commodities of the in, the slave trade in Americas. And you know the brutality that happened in India, the brutality that happened in Africa, um, that brought all of these people across the globe. This is why you can see like my, my roots, my family roots are Jamaican, Jamaican Panamanian, and then also indigenous of America. So I know in Jamaica, there's a lot of people that have from India, Indian, you know, um, ancestry. And my great grandfather is from India, you know. So it, it's like Indian really? ancestry. Yeah, Indian ancestry with, um, you know, uh, 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 these Caribbean roots. So you can see in just in the genealogy alone, you can see how colonization and commodization meet up to make this global you know, um, this global uh, commodity and, and capitalism, the rise of capitalism. And so what I saw in, in, in Indigo being the hidden commodity of the slave trade, I literally saw my own personal story and I was like, oh my God, how can I amplify this? How can I show this? And so the best way that I could do it was to be able to try to tell this story visually in a visual documentation. And um, I just, we showed a snippet, we showed, you know, just denim through time in America and, and how it and how it's been a social, um, cultural and political icon throughout American history. And so we showed, you know, it's starting in the origins and, and out of Africa and then going into, um, you know, the plantation and incarceration and all the different different spaces where denim has been used as, you know, obviously, in all these spaces in the in the as workwear you know for men and women women it being um you know uh, uh you know women in the americas had to become workers during the wars during world war ii and you see women emblazoned with them so we just try to take you through a, a, a very a small way to go through the timeline and history and and give it but you know, there was so much that we wanted to do and we're like, okay, we had to kind of like pull it back and just simplify it as much as we can. But I, I didn't expect it to make the impact that it did. I really didn't. I just was just trying to tell, you know, something that felt authentic for me to express denim, but I didn't expect it to make the impact. I mean, it's really had a global response in, and even with the factory partners that we have from Pakistan, to Italy, to um, Africa, and here in the United States, everyone has been so moved. The workers have been moved. I mean, it's just been incredible, you know? And so I'm really honored. I, I, I wanna be able and humbled by it because I feel like it's a really important message. And, and I, um, I'm glad that everyone has responded because, you know, we know that there's still modern slavery going on, still people are um, being impacted 
um, by uh, this capitalism um, and commoditization of resources. So I think it's important to shed light to that. And I've, obviously, I didn't realize how many people identified with the story. And so um, I think it's really great. I think you provided them uh, uh, a means to express, you know, they probably wanted to express themselves uh, in a particular way. And you provided that medium to them. You know, so it got, you know, uh, people, people found the connect uh, what they were looking for. So I think that was a wonderful uh, creation and wonderful expression, I would say, from your side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, as you say for your collection, like, you know, it's your clothing is cozy, it's comfortable, functional, productive, and sustainable. So, so many elements together. So can you explain that? Well, like I said, you know, sustainability is really important to me. I wanted to you know, I haven't been in the industry for a long time. I remember my first trip um, overseas was to Pakistan and back in 2007. And that was the first time I had gotten to see like factory hands-on. And that was my first feat of like thinking about um, how can we be better? Because I saw that there was so many chemicals used in the denim process, denim making process. And then I thought that was just like, something that I had seen only because I had no experience of being in the factory. So I thought that was just, you know, maybe that's Pakistan and that's how things work there. But then I went on to move to China and live in China and work directly with factories. And I saw that this is something that happens in every, in all the denim spaces. This is not indigenous to one area. This is going on. This is how people create denim. And so for years, it was always about trying to even as a design director, I was always looking at alternative fabrications and how we can be better in, in just in the market. How can we be better in, in, in um, making jeans? And, you know, often I was met with push, pushback just because, I mean, at the time I didn't understand, but I do understand for a company, it's really hard to pivot into to make such a bold statement in these fabrications when maybe the timing is not right. Maybe the customer really doesn't understand it. Maybe they don't see the value in it. I think it's a very brave stance for companies now to be like, you know, this is what we want to do and this is how we're committed to it. And so, you know, now I get it, but at the, also it's like we, we're being met with, we have to do something. We don't, we don't have an alternative. We have to make this change. And so, for me, it's been something that's really important to be able to have to work with sustainable fabrics. And I didn't want to come out with a collection unless I could do that. And so, um, you know, while I was in during the pandemic, uh, I thought about how are we going to come out of this? Like, what are people going to feel like? Are, is, are clothing going to be important? You know, and I had several conversations with different people like, you know, the clothing going to be like, are you going to be thinking about buying clothes? People thinking about buying because right now it's just about my essentials like what do i need like at the at the end of the day like i need to be able to protect myself my family my health all of this kind of stuff that's what the food but when you think about essentials it's clothing food health you know so i knew that there would be something about clothing in it i just couldn't i just was trying to wrap my head around it and to me it felt like after the pandemic people would want to come out being comfortable really cozy after being asked to shelter in place like they're gotten used to like being in like more loungy clothes and like relaxed clothing um they don't want to be restricted so to me it was really important to have loose fitting comfortable clothes they're going to look for functionality people are not going to want to carry a lot of things now you have this mask you maybe now you have to carry your bags to the grocery store you're not buying you're like you know there's different ways that we are operating at least in the united states where we have to bring our own things in order to to take things away and so there's a lot more personalization you know there's um so i was like how can i you know show that in the clothing so it was really important for it to be you know have a lot of functionality um you know denim in itself is often especially in the men's denim space it's always had much more functionality than women's denim and so I, that's what I've always loved. So I wanted to bring that into the into my pieces is to have this functionality pockets and zippers and that kind of stuff. Um, and as well as, you know, obviously being made in sustainable fabrics, but protective 
feeling like, you know, um, I'm protected. So some of our pieces have, you know, antiviral, antibacterial uh, coating, um, which I think there's been a wave of that in the denim space, which, you know, it's, it's important, you know, um, and we're not doing too much big washing with our denim where we you know we're kind of keeping it really simple um so in that way we're also thinking about how we're how we're um uh, uh making our products but all of that really meant a lot to me to be able to be comfortable functional um and cozy you know the the hoodie for me was being able to uh understand what was happening in the market that was the number one selling piece during the quarantine was hoodie people are just so happy. Okay. yeah yeah and so I felt like if I'm gonna have a hoodie I wanted to be able to say something that's gonna empower me and feel you know um inspired and so I decided to make these statement hoodies to inspire people you know and so that felt right for the brand you know and it also gave me space to play around with some tops you know, <laughs> in the in the in the in, in the collection and um, yeah. so, yeah, that's where, that's how, that's why I, I say that it's functional, cozy, comfortable, and, you know, sustainable. But how did you manage to get the physical, uh, you know, collection made in these times? You know, it's not, it's, it must have been very tough, you know. Some of it I did on my own, like my initial prototypes, prototypes I did on my own. Um, I've had really good relationships with factories, um, I have an incredible partnership with our Pakistani a uh, partner at Sorti who has really supported us in a lot of ways, um, supported the brand, um, believed in the story, believed in the message, um, had people out of the blue, like AGI denim and Candiani denim from the year prior who were like, we want to help and, and, and has given me their dead stock denim. And so I was, when I was in the pandemic, I was like, I have before, even before the sortie partnership, I had this dead stock denim and I'm just like, I have denim here. Like I have machines, I have denim. Let me see how I can make this happen. And, you know, I had access to all of this indigenous artisan fabric. Um, I had, you know, I had, I had everything I needed. I felt like, and that's why I felt like it was divine, you know, it was like divine timing. Like I didn't really have to go out and do too much sourcing it was already here in front of me and it just happened over time. Literally, you know, the, the representative from AGI was like, I'm just contacting you during the pandemic. You know, I don't know if you need any that here's, I have to, you know, all this hemp denim. I'm like, what? That's like exactly what I want. That's what, I mean. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm going to ship it to you. I'm like, what? You know? <laughs> and so stuff like that I really that's why I say it's divine timing like you know I feel like someone was saying okay your message is really important this needs to be shared in this moment and we're gonna you know like you know if you believe I believe in God but I believe that God was just for me like you know saying like I'm gonna give you everything you need to do what you need to do make it happen because I know that you can and so everything was there and um you know it couldn't have happened any better in the way that it did and so um i i i feel really humbled and really grateful for all that so i was able to do that and then by the time i was ready um there was some local manufacturers here that started to open up karada who's an incredible denim maker um in locally karada inc um ida and duncan husband and wife team they make incredible pieces and they were able to do a lot of they were able to do most of my local collection here in the United States um, and working with them. By the time I was ready to pull the trigger, they had they were ready to, to do the, the, the manufacturing for me. So, I mean, I've just had incredible support um, and I've been extremely lucky. So, um, or, you know, blessed, whatever, however you want to say it. Um, I, I feel really blessed, you know? I would say lucky and hardworking, you know, and of course, uh, with a with a heart, you know, you work work working with a heart. So I mean, uh, God helps in that case. Yes, absolutely. And you feel this? You said this is a divine moment. You know, this is the right perfect opportunity for the global awareness. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, you already mentioned, I think, uh, about that. But uh, if you want to add something on that, yeah, I can elaborate in that. Um, you know, similar to what I was saying earlier about 
this is a moment for um, us to really make impacts, you know, as designers, as artists, as makers, I think that we can come together, you know, we, the way that this pandemic, it's kind of, kind of all of put, a, put us all on, there was an, there was an interviewer that had asked me a question and she said that I feel like we've all been on, like, put on timeout, like, we've all been, like, asked to kind of, like, they go in your room, like a parent to a child, like go in your room and sit down and figure some things out. And I feel like in a lot of ways we have, we, we haven't been able to move through countries in the way that we, we once were, you know, we're all asked to be able to, you know, just staying out in our own home spaces and figure things out. But we have technology and we've still been able to connect to each other in, in so many ways. And, um, I feel like through that, this space has been able, has been a way that we can help each other and share ideas and help each other heal in a lot of ways. We can share, you know, sometimes I've, I've, I recognize from living in different spaces around the globe that sometimes what I know in the United States is something that is not have been made aware in that country or that country is teaching me to move a bit slower and take my time and think about, you know, and, and, and put value on the things that are important to me. And I feel like we have a lot to share in that way. And even in our practice, we don't need to make a lot of things. This is why my collection is very tight. Like right behind me, this is my whole collection. I don't have a ton of pieces. I don't need to have, because I think that we don't need to make a lot to make a statement and Absolutely. to help you know each other i think that this is a moment where factories can decide like you know what i want to get behind smaller companies that are doing big things that are, are the new generation you know through all of this chaos it's where where we birth something it's constant there there's always pain before birth before we transition into anything you need to see it shed itself. When you think about the, the, you know, the caterpillar becoming the butterfly, it has to shed its, its own being and eats its own self down and uses its own body as a caterpillar, um, as fuel and energy to become the butterfly. So there's always this incredible chaos and that can look chaotic and, you know, like, you know, oh my God, that's awful, but look what it becomes. And if, in order for us to be able to, um, become better humans and better stewards in our community. We have to go through this incredible transformation to be better and to learn and integrate and really be mindful of how we show up. And I think this is a, this is this moment is what it is. It's, you know, we're seeing and we're feeling a lot of pain. We're feeling a lot of grief, but I also think it's, you know, we're also being drawn closer to our families, to our homes, you know, and I think that 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 is that is on purpose so that we can connect and be, um, you know, closer to our foundations, our support systems. And so we can continue to like, it's like, all right, I'm going to go back and recharge, get myself grounded and rooted in my family. And then I'll be able to go off and, you know, propel and be better. And I think that's what we're all being asked to do right now. Yeah, indirectly, the creator is asking us to do that. And uh, we really hope, uh, you know, we really come out better people, you know, out of this pandemic, uh, better human beings, uh, and uh, more focused. And, uh, you know, I, I would say uh, less wasteful and more caring about other people, our community. Right. And what about the sustainability? Do you have any, uh, yeah, what is your, uh, you already mentioned about sustainability, but I mean, uh, You've seen so many things happening on sustainability in the industry. So uh, do you have any other uh, take on that? Well, I love what's happening. Um, I think, you know, on the larger companies, we, we're seeing people make, you know, um, small, small moves, which I think is a big deal for them. Um, I think the younger brands like myself, excuse me, like myself can take much bolder action because we don't have so much at stake. But I, I see us all heading for the same, you know, goal in that we are all moving towards being more sustainable. Um, you know, 
everything is changing. It's not obviously clothing, the way people are eating, the way people are, you know, just connecting. It's a very different way of living. I feel like in many ways we've been thrusted into the future, you know, the way the technology and everything is we've just been like thrusted into the future. We're having more one-on-one -on -one connections. Like when would I be able to talk to you like this? You know, yeah. I may have never been able to make your event, never have met you, you know what I mean? And so I feel like, you know, now in, in the market, I'm, I'm having one-on-one -on -one conversations with buyers. Most of the time that doesn't happen. It would be, you know, the salesperson or they want to meet with your sales team. So there's definitely a different, we're having this more interpersonal communication, which allows us to be, um, I think, more genuine, more authentic. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's allowing us to tell our stories. I love what's happening with traceability. I love that people are, you know, um, being able to tell the stories of how their product is being made. And again, you know, they're getting that firsthand from the designers. We're getting, the designers are getting it firsthand from the factories. We can record this information. We can, you know, all of it. I, I feel like there is, I'm trying to stay in the moment of the, see the bright side of this, because I do believe that there is a bright side to this. I do believe in the optimism of this moment. Um, I don't believe that, you know, even everything that we're experiencing right now has been so, you know, it's very, chaotic and 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 um it's a crisis that's happening but i do believe that there is you know uh um gifts on the other side of it so i'm excited to see the sustainable space growing i can't wait to see what else we're going to do with denim i think there's so much it's such a beautiful canvas um i think there's so much to be done with it i think we have just just very very we just we just you know, just started with a little seed. I think there's so much that can happen and I can't wait. I, I want to be there and I want to be part of all of it. So <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, we all are. We all are excited. And um, uh, Mika, I would like to thank you for a wonderful conversation, very heartfelt conversation. Uh, and uh, I really want to congratulate you again, you know, for all the success you had with this uh, collection and with the concept, with the uh, idea and uh, the way it gave hope to so many people. So I would, it's, it's, it has been wonderful. So I really congratulate you once again. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, you for asking me to be a part of this. Mm -hmm.